Day four, we are talking about polynomials and uh, the connection between the functions and the zeros and the graph. All right, so look at uh, problem number one. We're supposed to sketch a graph of the function and we're supposed to keep in mind the zeros, um, which will show us the x-intercepts and also the end behavior. Um, look, here is the deal. It would be very helpful to uh, know about the end behavior. Let's look at that first, okay? It says keep in mind the end behavior. Here's what they mean. Um, look, we need to see if this is an even uh, degree function, an odd degree function. Um, let's count the x's. If you take away the parentheses, um, what you have is well, I say parentheses. If you take away the, um, the plus 4 and the minus 4 and the minus 9, all right, just focus on the variables, then this is what we have. So we have minus x, and then this is like x squared, and this is another x, okay? So basically, we have x times x squared times x, all right? If we put all this together, this will tell me uh, what the degree of this function is. So this is x times x squared, so that's x to the third, x to the fourth. Okay, so I am dealing with a quartic, all right? I mean, I took out the constant, so really this is going to be some more complicated polynomial. But um, just counting the x's like this, one of these, two of these, one of these, total of four, um, that tells me the degree. Okay, and uh, that will help me with the end behavior. Because remember, if you have even degree like this, um, the end behavior is going to work like a parabola. Okay, um, the deal was basically like this. If you had even degree, the end behavior would be like a parabola, either upward facing if it had a positive leading coefficient, or downward facing if it had a negative leading coefficient. Of course, if the degree is odd, then it f if the end behavior worked like this. Um, and uh, if it was positive, it would be like an, a capital N. And if it were negative leading coefficient, it would be like an upside down N. So getting back to the problem at hand, okay, um, this is even and it is a negative leading coefficient. So that tells me that it's going to be this type of end behavior, all right, falling on the left and falling on the right. Okay, so keep that in your mind as we do this problem. So in fact, I'm just going to make a tiny little sketch over here on the left to remind me uh, this is my end behavior sketch, all right? It's even degree, it's negative, so I know the end behavior is going to be falls on the left, falls on the right. All right, that'll come in handy later. Now, as far as the, um, the uh, zeros, that's easy enough. Because um, of this uh, x plus 4, then I have negative 4 is one of my zeros. Because of the x minus 4, that's going to be a positive 4. 0. And because of the x minus 9, it is going to be a positive 9. Let me zoom in a little bit. All right, that means that these are the values at which the x-intercepts will occur. So negative 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4. Positive 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And 9, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, these are the three zeros. Now, here's the other thing that you need to know. The, uh, the behavior at the graph, um, uh, when the uh, graph touches the x-intercept, when it comes and touches the zero, it's going to depend on the multiplicity of that particular factor. In other words, when I say multiplicity, 
Is there just one of them? Is there two of them? Is there three of them? Okay, um, that's multiplicity. If I just have x minus two, for example, that's just one. But if I have x minus two squared, that means you know x minus two times x minus two. So that means this one uh, factor is really being used twice. Okay, now, if the multiplicity is one, all right, if the factor just occurs once, then uh, at that particular zero, the graph just goes straight through, just passes through it. So that's why, um, you know, if I set this equal to zero and solved it, Um, hold on, my graph jumped on me. Um, if I were to set this equal to zero and solve it, uh, this is going to give me uh, x equals 2. Um, that's why I'm going to have this zero here at 2. Now it goes straight through. Now, um, this will also give me a zero of 2. Okay, but if it's a double like this, then the graph actually bounces at that particular zero. It does not pass straight through. It touches it and then goes back the way it came. All right? So if it's double, if it's multiplicity two, it's a bounce. And finally, if, it, if the multiplicity is tripled, okay, if, um, if the factor occurs three times, then you get what's called an inflection. All right? An inflection is where the graph uh, curves its way in and then it does pass through, sort of flattens out a little bit, and then it keeps on going. Um, look, what's really happening when you do an inflection? Let me show you. All right, imagine that um, at this point, we're going to have a point of inflection. Now, you know how a parabola works, right? Um, a parabola does this kind of a thing. It, you know, it curves like this and up, and then it also curves this way, like this, okay? A parabola. Now, an inflection point works sort of like a parabola that gets split down the middle. Let me show you what I mean. All right, say you've got a parabola or a shape that's very much like a parabola. It's curving down, it's uh, touching this point, and it's going back up, all right? But instead, imagine that we took this half and flipped it upside down, like this. All right, then you're looking at an inflection point, all right? So it's curving in like a parabola, and then it's continuing to curve like a parabola, but it's curving the other way. So when it curves in and then curves back out, that's an inflection point, okay? And that's what happens when you have a triple multiplicity, all right? When you have a factor that occurs three times, it sort of curves in and curves out, all right? That's an inflection point, okay? So, now, so um, what we have here is um, we have our three zeros. Now, this first one was just a single, okay? Um, so for that one, it just passes straight through. Okay, the second one though is a double. So uh, that one is going to bounce. And then nine is a single again. So it's just going to pa pass straight through. Okay, um, now keeping in mind the end behavior, all right? So I know that this graph has to start from down low, all right? And it's got to end up down low. So if I keep that in mind as I sort of draw this graph, um, I think I'll do this in green. So um, my graph is going to start from down low. When it gets to this first uh, one, the negative 4, it's going to go through it. When it gets to the second one, it's going to bounce. And then when it gets to the third one, it's going to go through. It's going to go through, bounce, and through, starting from here. So that might look something like this. Okay, so here goes the graph. It's got to go through here. 
Now, I've got to curve this back around and come back down in time to bounce off of here. Okay, and then I've got to curve back around and come back down in time to go through that graph. And then it would keep going. So notice my end behavior. My end behavior is the end behavior that I wanted. Um, it was an even degree, so both have to point the same direction. It's negative leading coefficient, so both have to be pointing down. So I have the correct end behavior. It ha I have the correct uh, x-intercepts, the correct zeros, negative 4, 4, and 9. And I have the correct behavior. It, it goes through this one, bounces at this one, and goes through that one. That's how you do this. Let's look at the next one. All right, this one we need to take a second and finish factoring it. So this is going to factor further. Um, x squared will be x times x. 10 could factor as 2 times 5. To get a negative 3, I would need a positive 2 and a minus 5. And positive 2 times negative 5 does make negative 10. So there I have factored this. And I'm just going to bring this part down. Okay, so that's an x plus 1 to the third power. Okay, so I have two singles and a triple factor. Okay, now remember how this works. All right, for the singles, like this, it just goes straight through like this. For a triple, like this, third power, it's an inflection which is going to curve and sort of flatten out and then curve its way out again. So this is what should be happening at that last zero. Okay, so here are my zeros. Um, based on these, okay, my zeros are at negative 2, positive 5, and negative 1. Okay? Um, but uh, this negative 2, at negative 2, it should go straight through. Um, at 5, it should go straight through. But at negative 1, because it's a triple, it should be an inflection. So through, through, inflection. So let's see. So at uh, so a positive 2 is right here, okay? Um, I'm sorry, why did I say positive 2? Silly button. Negative 2 is right here. Positive 5, 3, 4, 5. And then we have negative 1. So I have to be careful, okay? So it's really my negative 1 here that is my inflection. Okay, so let's draw this graph in green. Let's talk about the degree and, uh, and the end behavior. Is this going to be even or odd? Looking again at this uh, function without the plus 2 and the minus 5 and the plus 1. Um, this becomes x from this and from the x minus 5 will just give me another x. And from the x plus 1, without the plus 1, I will have x to the third power. All right? Now, when I want to talk about the degree of this, I'm going to count up all these x's. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right? It's a total of 5 x's. This is degree 5. Okay? So this is odd degree. Um, so it's odd degree. Okay, so it's going to be one of these, all right, sort of like an N or an upside down N, but more specifically, it has a positive leading coefficient. There's no uh, negative sign in front, so it's going to actually be um, the positive version, this one that looks like, a, like an N, capital N. All right, so just as far as the end behavior goes. So I'm going to go ahead and draw myself a little end behavior sketch to remind me that the end behavior should work like this. Okay? 
So I need to draw this end behavior through these three points. Uh, please keep in mind, um, you know, I think I'll make this one purple to remind us that this is the one that is our inflection. So looking at my end behavior sketch, I need to start off low and end up high. But as I go, I'm going to go through this red one, do an inflection at this one, sort of flatten out and go through. And then I'm going to go through the third one. All right, and, and somehow I have to end up going up high. So here I go, I have to start off low. So starting off low is going to be like this. Okay, so I'm going to go through this point. Now I have to immediately turn around and sort of flatten out so I could do my, there's my inflection. Okay, then I can bend back around in time to go through this one. And then it will continue like that. Okay, so your graph will look something basically like this. Okay, um, it's going to go through the first one, do an inflection, all right, sort of flatten out and go through, and then go through the third one. Um, and look at the end behavior, all right? The end behavior had to be falling on the left and rising on the right, okay? And it is. Okay, so that's how you do that. All right, so now let's see if we can do it the other way. Okay, um, given the graph, we're supposed to turn this into a polynomial, okay? Um, now, look for the zeros, all right? I have zeros here, and I have one here, okay? And I have one here. All right, those are my three zeros. Let me zoom in. Okay, now we have to pay attention to the behavior at the graph of each one of these, okay? So, I have a uh, zero, um, let's see, so what I have is a, a bounce at negative three. So let me write this down, I have a bounce at negative three. Okay, a bounce at negative three, right, that means I have a factor of x plus three, right? But because it is a bounce, when it's a bounce, all right, that means it must have been multiplicity two, it must be a double. Okay, so that means this must be a double. All right, so this is going to be one factor in my polynomial. Now let's look at the green one. It goes through, so let's see, it goes through um, at zero. Interesting. Okay, now just for a minute, I'm going to put, um, that means a factor of like, let's say, x minus zero, okay? But look, am I really gonna put minus zero or am I gonna just put x? Yeah, I think um, putting minus zero is kind of silly, so um, that's just gonna translate into x because it's like x minus zero or x plus zero, but x plus zero is just x. All right, so that was a little strange. Um, but then finally we have a zero at one. And again, it just goes through. So it goes through at one, okay? Now that translates into a factor of x minus one. And because it just goes through, it's just a single. So there you go. So these are the three things I have. I have x plus three squared and x and x minus one. So I need to put them together to build a polynomial. And you know what, I think I was nice and I said, leave it in factored form. So this time you don't have to multiply all these out. So I don't really care what order you put them in. Okay, um, so you could just do this. Um, let's see, I think I will just use blue. So you could go like this, f of x, 
equals. Now you could put them in, in, in the order in which they appear, like from left to right. So you could go x plus 3 squared, right? And then we got the green one, which is just x. And then we have the purple one, which is x minus 1. So that would be perfectly fine. Now, most people will rearrange this. You know, if you see this in a textbook or something, you're more likely to see it in the following order. When it's just x like that, they usually will put that like in front. Okay, and then you would probably see your x minus 1 after that. And then you would probably see your x plus 3 squared at the end. Okay, but the order really doesn't matter. We have to pay attention to the end behavior to see um, whether or not this is, should be a positive or negative leading coefficient. Um, look at the end behavior. See how this is falling on the left and it's falling on the right. By the way, is this, um, as far as degrees, is this even or odd? All right, well, from the graph alone, we should know that this is an even degree um, because the end behavior is uh, pointing in the same direction like a parabola. All right? Uh, only a, if, if it's only an even degree, we'll have the end behavior pointing the same way. Now, with that in mind, is this the positive version or the negative version as far as the leading coefficient? Now, whenever I think of uh, degree, if it's even, I sort of picture a parabola. So if I imagine drawing a parabola sort of through all of this, my parabola, whoa, I got crooked there at the end, but um, you can still see where I'm going with this. It's an upside down situation, all right? Should I even try to do it better than that? Because I bet, watch me do it worse. Okay. Yeah, so because it's an upside down situation, all right, with both arms pointing toward the ground, we know that this is the negative leading coefficient situation. So we need to put a minus sign in front of this um, to make it correct, okay? If this were upward facing, everything would be the same, but I would uh, leave off the minus sign. Okay, so this would be now the final answer. Okay, let's take a look at number four. All right, so we have a zero here, and we have another one here, and we have another one here. These are the three zeros. Let's talk about them. Okay, um, let's start with the red one. This is an inflection. All right, see how it curves in, sort of flattens out, and then curves its way out. It, it goes through, but it doesn't go straight through. It swerves through, all right? That's an inflection. Curve, and then curves the other way. Um, so, at an inflection point, remember, that means, that means it must be a triple. Multiplicity three, it's a triple. Okay, so it's an inflection. All right, it's an inflection at negative five. Okay, that translates into a factor of x plus five, right? Sort of the opposite of that, but it's a triple. So x plus five to the third power. Now this one down here, it just goes straight through. Okay, so um, let's see. I'm just going to write it over here. It goes through at 2. Okay, and that translates into a factor of x minus 2. And since it just goes through, that means it's just a single. All right, and finally, 
it goes through at five. So let's see, it goes through at five. Okay, and that translates into a factor of x minus five. And because it just goes through, that again is, when it goes straight through like that, that's just a multiplicity one, it's just a single. Okay, so this is what we should have. You know what, on number three, I forgot to pay attention to the end behavior. I'm gonna have to go back to that. Okay, um, so, on this one, Um, let's see, so let's go ahead and set up our function. So our function could be like this, f of x equals. Now these don't have to be in any particular order. I like to put this uh, high exponent one last. So uh, I will go ahead and put the green one first. Okay, so I've got my x minus two from there. Now I'm gonna put my purple one next. All right, so I've got my x minus five from right there. And I'm going to put the red one last. Okay, so x plus 5 to the third power. Okay, again, the order of these factors does not matter. However, um, what does matter now is the end behavior. Okay, you can see that this is an odd degree function because of the way it falls on the left and it rises on the right. If it were even, they'd both be going the same way. Um, but we have to pay attention to the fact, um, is this the positive version or the negative version? In other words, is this a positive leading coefficient or a negative leading coefficient? Um, now, remember that I'm sort of thinking of a capital N when I look at this. And uh, what I learned was, if it looks like a capital N, that's the positive version. If it has the end behavior of an upside down N, then that is a negative leading coefficient. Well, looking at this one, okay, if I sort of just broadly sketch my N through here, like this, okay, this has the end behavior of a capital N, a right side up N. That means this is a positive leading coefficient which just means I don't need to put anything here. It's positive, so I can leave it that way. All right, we're supposed to write an equation for a polynomial with the following zeros. All right, well, if this is the zero of negative two, that means I have a factor of x plus two. If I have a zero of five, that means I have a factor of x minus five, okay? You can imagine setting these equal to zero and solving and getting these back again. Um, so I, all I really need to do is uh, multiply these out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do the distributive property. So I'm gonna take this x and I'm gonna multiply twice. x times x is x squared x times negative 5 is negative 5x. Then I'm going to distribute the 2 as well. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. If I combine my like terms, then I'm done. So that'll be x squared minus 3x minus 10. Okay, so that would be it for number 5. All right, looking at number six. Okay, um, this one, if, it the, if I have a zero of one, that means I have a factor of x minus one. If I have a zero of negative four, that means I have a factor of x plus four. And if I have a zero of negative three, that means I have a factor of x plus three. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back and multiply all this stuff together. Now when I have three to multiply like this, I like to do two at a time. I like to do these two and then I'll do this one later. So here I go. I'm gonna take this x and I will distribute the x. 
So that is going to give me uh, x squared, um, and then x times 3 is 3x. Okay, then I'm going to distribute the 4. All right, 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 3 is 12. Okay, so I've got that. Um, now, if I go ahead and combine my like terms, then I've got x squared plus 7x, all right, 3x plus 4x, uh, plus 12. And then I will just bring down my x minus 1. All right, so now I need to do that over again. So I'm just going to do my distributive property again. So uh, this time I'm distributing x. Okay, so that's going to give me, see, x times x squared, that is x to the third power. x times 7x is plus 7x squared. All right x times 12 is 12x. All right, then I distribute the minus 1. All right, minus 1 times all this stuff. So that's going to give me minus x squared, minus 7x, and minus 12. Okay, all I need to do now is combine my like terms, and I'm done. Okay, um, x to the third power doesn't have any like terms, so I just put x to the third power. x squared, all right, I've got my 7x squared, and I've got my negative x squared. That's like negative 1. Together, they make 6x squared, 7 minus 1. So plus 6x squared. Now the x terms, I have like terms for that as well. All right, because I have positive 12 and I have negative 7. That is positive 5. So that'll be plus 5x. And then the negative 12 doesn't have any like terms, so I just bring it down. Okay, so this will be the polynomial that we were asked for. All right, this is the polynomial that would have these zeros. All right, how about number seven? Ooh, these ones have I in it. Now, please be aware of the fact that um, imaginary numbers always occur in plus or minus pairs called conjugates. All right, if I see 4i, negative 4i, it always goes with it, even if I don't show it. Okay? So, um, if I have these zeros, then I will have these factors. All right, from this zero, I have x minus 4i. From this one, I have x plus 4i. And from this third one, I have x minus 3. Okay? All right, so I'm sort of doing the opposite of all those. Um, now I'm going to distribute. Again, I'm just going to do two at a time. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, multiply these two first, all right? The two i ones. And let's see what I get. So, all right, so I'm going to take this x and distribute. Okay, so I got x times x. That is x squared. x times 4i, that is 4ix. Okay, now I'm going to take the negative 4i and I will distribute that. Negative 4i times x is negative 4ix. Negative 4i times positive 4i is negative 16i squared. Okay, so this is what I have so far. It's time to combine like terms, okay? Let me go ahead and bring this down. So I have all of this came from the yellow. 
and I'm still going to bring down my x minus 3. I'm just bringing it down. But I need to combine like terms. Now watch this carefully. I am going to get x squared. Now these are like terms, but uh, they just cancel out. Positive 4ix and you know it was a negative 4ix. They cancel each other out. They're gone. That leaves this. Now watch what happens. See I have a negative 16i squared. Why am I going to put a plus 16 with no i squared? Why did I do that? All right, I will show you why I did that off to the side. Okay, look at this. I had negative 16i squared. Please remember that i squared equals negative 1. So what I really had then was negative 16 times negative 1. And a negative times negative is a positive. So that made plus 16. That's why this negative 16, it's really negative 16 times negative 1, and it became a plus 16. Okay, and then I have to go ahead and multiply this out. So I will once again distribute like this. Okay, so that is going to give me x squared times x is uh, x to the third power. x squared times negative 3 is negative 3x squared. All right, now distribute the 16. 16 times x is positive 16x. 16 times negative 3 is negative 48. Okay, um, and really that's it. There are no like terms, so that's the answer. I'm just going to go ahead and change it all to blue. So x to the third power minus 3x squared plus 16x minus 48 is your answer. Um, oftentimes there will be like terms to combine in that step. Okay, so that was number seven. Let's take a look at number eight. Okay, here's the one big thing you have to watch out for. I mentioned it a second ago, but here it is again. Um, imaginary numbers always occur in plus minus pairs called conjugates. So, but the last time I gave you them both, all right, 4i and negative 4i. I gave you the full set. This time, I'm only giving you negative 7i. But you must understand that uh, automatically you know that positive 7i goes with it. So if I only give you one, you must include the other because it is there. All right, so really, we have three zeros to deal with not just one. I mean, I'm sorry, not just two. Okay, so with that in mind, from this one, I'm going to get um, x minus 7i. From this one, I have x plus 7i. And from this one, I get x plus 2. And from there, it becomes just like number seven. Okay? So, one more time. Let's do it one more time. I'm going to multiply the two i factors first. So if I put some distributive property on this, it will look like this. x times x, so that's x squared. x times 7i, that's plus 7ix. All right, distributing the negative 7i. Negative 7i times x is negative 7ix. Negative 7i times positive 7i is negative 49i squared. Watch out, i squared is negative 1. All right, let me just emphasize this one more time. i squared equals negative 1. Okay, um, anyway, back to business. So I've got this so far. I'm going to bring down the old x plus 2. All right, just bringing it down. I need to combine these like terms, but once again, these cancel each other out. Okay, so I'm going to have 
x squared. See that negative 49i squared? It's going to become plus 49. Do you understand why this time? i squared is negative 1. So this is negative 49 times negative 1. A negative times negative is a positive. That's why it's plus 49. Okay, so that'll be uh, times x plus 2. One more time, we distribute. All right, like this. Okay, so x squared times x, that is x to the third power. x squared times 2, that is 2x squared. All right, now distribute the 49. All right, 49 times x is plus 49x. 49 times 2 is 98. All right, once again, I don't see any like terms, so this really is the answer. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make it blue. Okay, so the final answer is x to the third power plus 2x squared plus 49x plus 98. Very often there will be like terms that you need to combine here, uh, but this time there weren't, so that's it. And I think that's it for this entire assignment. Did I do everything? Okay, that's it. Oh man, I forgot to tell you guys not to copy off of me and not to have a pencil in your hand as you were doing this. So if you did this whole thing with a pencil in your hand, you know, shame on you. You know better. It'll show up on the test. You'll be sorry.